Hello, my fellow Jawas, and welcome to a mortar tutorial video. This has been a long time coming. I've been asked multiple times, where is it? When are we getting it? And here we are. I love using the mortar. I always have, always will. And it's mostly thanks to a game called Enemy Territory, which was a Wolfenstein multiplayer game from the mid 2000s. In that game, the mortar was operated off at angles, not distance, and you really had to know how the angle that you were firing at, what that distance would become based on your elevation in the map. It had a really steep learning curve, but in the end I had mastered it and my name became synonymous with the mortar to other people whenever I joined the lobby. They knew I was going to put a mortar on my slot and I was going to use it. To this day, every time a game has a mortar, it brings those nostalgic feelings back for me from that mid-2000s time period when I played that game, and I played that game for about 5-6 years, so it's always been a part of my life. Another fun fact, if you didn't know, if you've ever seen the show The Pacific and you follow the story of Eugene Sledge, he's also part of a mortar squad, which I thought was really cool because movies and things don't usually follow mortar squads, generally because they're more on the back line and their stories, according to them, aren't as exciting as those on the front line, which we all know is baloney. But yeah, that's why you don't usually see him. So when that Pacific story was being told and he was put in the mortar squad, I was super excited to finally see them get some representation in film and media. You do see a little bit in the Band of Brothers show, but not nearly as much here. The reason I wanted to make the video is I get a lot of questions while I'm streaming about how to use the mortar. So I figured I wanted to share some tips that I use personally so those who aspire to rain explosive death upon their enemies can do so with confidence. Now a couple things to keep in mind. The mortar has about a 5 to 8 meter blast radius based on my own testing here in the practice zone. And due to the realistic components of wind and air pressure and etc, the mortars in game are programmed to have shot deviation just like everything else so they don't always fall exactly where you're aiming and expecting it to go. Now, let's move on to the specific tips. Tip number one, marks and pings. Your team's marks will tell you where an enemy is coming from, where they're hiding, where they're flanking, etc. As such, your mortar, when you are in mortared mode, you will be able to see the distance from your position to the ping and dial it in exactly. Again, your shots will deviate from the point. So let's say it's 75 meters out, you fire a mortar directly at 75 meters lined up perfectly, it will not fall directly there. It will be moved slightly by that deviation. So you're not going to want to fire one at that spot. You're going to want to fire maybe three to four, four to five, based on how heavy the infantry push is. And that's something you can communicate to your team if you don't have visual on it yourself. Tip number two are the tanks. Now, I've heard a lot of stories of people in the comments while I'm streaming say, oh, I've killed many tanks with my mortar. You really haven't. The mortars are not effective against tanks. Now, back in the day when small arms fire could kill a tank if it was empty, of course, a mortar would instantly kill it if there was no one inside. Currently, the mortars still have the potential to trigger that explosion, but they're not 100% anymore. And most likely what you're doing is you're hitting the tank, which causes the little picture to show up on the top right of your screen that you have hit the tank. And you're most likely killing either the commander who's sticking his head out or infantry that are running around the tank. It is very unlikely that you are causing any penetration and actual damage to the tank itself. Now that's not to say you can't get into lucky shot on something small like the Daimler, but it's very, very unlikely. I personally have never been able to completely take down a tank, so it's not even worth your time. If you see a tiger, don't aim at the tiger. It's a waste of your time. Aim somewhere else. Uh, tip number three is the self ping. This is one of the best tools as a mortarman that you have in your arsenal. What you do to self ping is you press M to open up your map, you hold the alt key to enable your cursor and you right click wherever you want. Now I personally use this to gauge the distance between the enemy spawn point and the current objective. And then I use that distance to dial in the mortar to tell myself I need to fire in between these two points and cover as much area between these two points that I possibly can. So if, for example, if the objective is 75 meters away and the enemy spawn is 150 meters away based on your self ping, you know you need to fire your mortars anywhere between 80 to 140 meters. Now how you want to spread those out, that's up to you. What patterns you want to do there, that's up to you. But that's your active zone of enemy movement that you're going to want to place that mortar fire in. If you do it too close, you're not going to hit anything. If you do it too far, well, they're not spawning way back there. So this self ping is going to help give you that distance and gauge exactly where you want to put your rounds. Tip number four is the patterns of fire. Now when firing your mortar, you need to maximize the area that you are affecting. And in order to maximize the kill potential, you're going to want to fire all nine mortars in a spreaded pattern. 
If you fire all nine mortars in one spot, rapid fire, you may hit a couple people, but in the end, the area will be cleared and no further kills will occur. Or the enemy will see the area that's getting pelted by the mortars and they'll just avoid it. You need to make them unpredictable. There are two main firing patterns that I have personally adopted that I like to use regularly. I use what I like to call the zigzag walk back, and this basically starts at the objective point, and then you push 10 to 15 meters back to the left, and then 10 meters to the right. 10 to 15 to the left, 10 to the right. And you walk those mortars back. So as they're falling, as the infantry is pushing up, the mortars are gonna start killing the ones closest to the point and then killing them farther and farther back. Basically pushing that group, if you are hitting them, back towards their spawn. The last pattern that I particularly like to employ is what I like to call the box. And basically, this is when I don't know where the enemy are at, but I know the area that they're at. Let's say that, again, I've set my self ping and I know the area of the objective. Let's say there's 50 meters between the two. I want to hit as much space in that 50 meters that I can. So let's say the objective is at 75 meters and the spawn point is at 150. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dial my mortar in a little bit left of the spawn area at 140. Fire a mortar, move approximately 20 meters to the right, fire one, 20 meters to the right, fire one. That creates a line, that's the top of my box. I then pull back towards the objective and I maybe 10 to 15 meters, right now I'm firing at about 115 or 120, 125. I fire another one on the far right, one back in the middle, one on the left. I then pull back 10 to 15 meters, now I'm firing about 110 and I fire again, one now, one on the left, one in the middle, one on the right. And you can see what this looks like on the screen. That last mortar you can put directly in the center. Closer to you, it doesn't matter. What you're doing here is you're creating this box that if any enemy is inside this zone, they're going to be killed by the mortar. You're maximizing your overall area of effectiveness. Now you're not gonna get as many kills doing this because again, this is mostly a blind fire situation. You don't know where they're at. You just know kind of where they could be. Again, based on those self pings and the objective marker being your anchor point, but it does give you the widest area to get kills. So those are the two patterns that I like to use. The other one is kind of like the box method, but you make it more unpredictable. Let's say you start at the bottom left corner of the box and then you move up 20 meters to the right and you fire off another one, then you move down 20 meters, fire off one, up and left 20 meters to fire. And again, you're still creating a box to cover a huge area, but you're firing them more sporadically so the enemy doesn't know where they're gonna fall. Again, either way is perfectly fine. You just do not wanna fire everything directly at the same spot over and over again because the enemy will notice that and they'll just walk around it and it'll be completely wasted. Tip number five is gonna be the buildings. If the objective is inside a building, do not mortar on the point. Simple as that. Do not fire them directly at the point. The reason is because they're going to hit the roof. So you're just wasting your time, you're wasting your munitions, and you're wasting your potential. What you want to do is you want to hit behind the point. So you have to have some sort of game sense and map knowledge. How big is this building? How many meters from the center of the building where the marker is for the objective to the back door? Let's say it's 10 meters, or you estimate 10 to 50 meters. So if the objective is at 75, right, we're going to keep using 75 and I know it's 10 meters to the back door, that's gonna be 85. I'm gonna probably wanna dial in at 90 to 95 and start one of my patterns. Why? Because I know I should be hitting around where they're coming in from that back door area to reinforce the building. Alternatively, if your team is giving you good information or using pings and they're saying they're coming from the left or the right side of the building, now what you want to do is gauge again from the center of that building where the point is to the right or left side of the building how many meters do you estimate that is 10 15 meters then estimate a little bit more outside because you, you again deviation right you're gonna deviate so if you fire right at the side wall you're probably gonna hit the roof if it deviates over a little bit and then start one of your patterns going to the right or left this again will maximize your potential without letting the buildings get in your way tip number six is resupplying when you need more mortars, you need to go to an ammo box. Any engineer obviously can make this for you. But what you need to keep in mind is that you need your own boxes. The reason is because one set of mortars will completely deplete the ammo box. So as soon as they build it and you use it, it's now empty. No one else can get ammo from it. So what you do not want to do is go to the front line where everybody's fighting and using an ammo box that's on the objective and use that box and then run back to the back and start mortaring because you've just denied your team the ability to use that ammo. 
what you want to do is one of two things either a have an engineer in your squad and build your own ammo boxes which is what i personally do or ask a teammate to come to the back where you are build you a couple boxes and then go back to the front and build one for the team all right and then tip number seven is going to be using your mini map now if you have any idea that you might be missing your target or you might be hitting the wrong spot hold m and watch your mortars as they land they show up as little tiny explosions on the map and you can see how your uh, pattern is working out you can see are you going onto the objective on the roof are you hitting behind the roof it kind of can show you that information it's not 100 percent accurate right the map doesn't give us every detail but it gives you enough information to tell you do i need to push it the distance a little bit farther or shorter to more to the left more to the right again don't get disheartened if you fire it and you see it didn't go exactly where you wanted. They have built in deviation and that's going to happen and the map will show you how heavy that deviation is. Now the last tip is going to be how do you counter a mortar and unfortunately there really is no way to hard counter a mortar other than being inside a building and not out in the open. In this game they need something either A the mortars need to leave a little red dot on your mini map kind of like artillery so you know where they're coming. B you need to be able to see the enemy mortar on the mini map or C, they need to, oh no, not or, and C, they need to not allow mortars to be fired while in the gray zone so that way the enemy team can push and find them and kill them uh, effectively. Alternatively, you could just do this. But those are pretty much all the basics that you need to know in order to succeed with the mortar. I wish you the best. May you have many kills once your rounds are complete. And as always, my Jawas, thank you very much for hanging out with me today. Ubania.